The performance of a Synology NAS. A lot of people take it for what it is, meaning that when they install a package or run a virtual machine or Docker container, the performance they see is what they learn to deal with. But what if there was a way to increase the performance of all of your Docker containers, virtual machines, and packages, and just about any application running on a Synology NAS? That's what we're gonna look at in this video. So how can we actually increase the performance of a Docker container, virtual machine, or package? We can't overclock the CPU. The memory can be upgraded depending on the device you're using, but unless you're running low on memory, all you'll be doing is increasing the total and you might see a slight performance increase, but it'll be minimal. So the only thing we can really do is attempt to increase the storage speeds, which will increase everything from sequential read writes to random read writes, and overall can potentially be significantly more performant from an everyday usage perspective than what you're currently using. But how do we increase the read write speeds? Depending on the NAS you're using, you can add more hard drives to your RAID array, but it's not guaranteed to be a tremendous performance increase depending on the actual NAS you own and the total number of drives you'll be using. You can install SSDs, but that means you'll need to either replace the hard drives you're currently using or take up drive bays on your device with SSDs. You can add NVMe drives and configure them as SSD cache. We're getting closer, but the downside of SSD cache is that you can't really control what is and isn't in cache. Though Synology tries to keep frequently accessed data in cache. In a perfect world, what you're attempting to access or use will be in cache, but if it's not, you'll get around the same performance as the RAID array without SSD caching enabled. There's also potentially data integrity issues with read write cache, which is why you have to use RAID 1 with it. So make sure you understand everything about SSD caching on a Synology NAS before actually implementing it. This all leads us to our solution, a RAID 1 NVMe volume. If you configure Docker on an NVMe volume, you'll ensure that every single time a Docker container runs, it's using the fastest available storage on the device. If you configure that NVMe volume to be available for virtual machine storage, the virtual machine disk will utilize the fastest available storage as well. And finally, if you install packages that have a lot of disk IO, you'll improve the performance when using them as well. Think of something like Plex, where it's constantly displaying cover art and metadata. This exact scenario will be drastically faster running on an NVMe volume than on a RAID array consisting of hard drives only. Now this all leads us to a massive disclaimer and what was ultimately the most difficult part of making this video. This is completely dependent on your setup. For example, if you have an 8-bay NAS with RAID 10 configured, you might see a performance increase, but it won't even be close to someone with a 4-bay NAS running RAID 5 or RAID 6. Next, if you only want faster read speeds, you can configure read-only SSD caching with RAID 0, which can potentially be faster than the RAID 1 NVMe volume will be configuring. And more important than anything, you need to make sure your NAS even supports NVMe volumes because not all of them officially do, though there are unofficial ways of getting it working on devices that do not have official support. The point is, this isn't going to be right for everyone. So this is my suggestion. Look at what we're doing today and view it as an option. You don't have to do this, but if you're noticing that your media server takes a while to load, or the performance of a virtual machine is bad, or even if a Docker container takes a while to load, this can have a massive increase on the overall performance of the NAS in terms of what you're actually using it for on a regular basis. So we're gonna look at how to configure everything, but keep these disclaimers in mind as we do. Before we get started, if you wanna hire me, link is in the description. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is actually configure the NVMe storage pool. So in order to do that, obviously you have to have the NVMe drives installed in the actual device. But as soon as you do, you can go to uh, the storage manager and if you select HDD and SSD, you should see the two M.2 drives that we added. I'm using Synology drives, you don't have to, but just make sure that they're both installed. At that point, you're gonna head over to storage and you can create a storage pool and then you can select next tier and you can select the type. So we're gonna select RAID 1 and then you'll see that you need to have a minimum of two drives and that's good, that's what we're looking for. Next, it's gonna warn you that if you ever have to remove one of these drives, you have to fully shut down the device so you can select OK. And this is where we're actually gonna create it. So you can select both drives here and then you can select next. We're gonna skip the drive check and then you can select apply. 
all the data on the drives will obviously be erased, but you can then select OK. So what we just did is create an NVMe storage pool. So you'll see that there are volumes for these other two storage pools I have, but nothing exists for storage pool three. So what we're gonna do at this point is create a volume. So you can create a volume. We're gonna use storage pool three. We're just gonna max out the volume. You can select next. We are gonna use BTRFS. We're not gonna encrypt the volume and we can select apply. So as soon as we do that, what you'll see is that it's going to go through and create the volume. And now we'll have a storage pool and a volume. This is all running on the actual NVMe drives themselves. Obviously, I'm using small NVMe drives. However, the space available will be dependent on what you actually installed inside of the device. So the drive is created at this point. However, we're not actually using it for anything. So we're gonna go through a few examples to show you how you can actually use this NVMe storage pool. So the first we'll do is actually a shared folder. So inside of the control panel, if you open up your shared folder sections, you're gonna see a volume that all of your storage pools are actually on. So the easiest thing to do is if you wanted to move one of these shared folders from an existing volume to our NVMe volume, all you have to do is edit it and then you can change the volume at that point to be the volume that you created and you can select save. It'll then warn you that it could take a while and you have to agree to the risks and then you can continue. And what it will do is it will move that actual shared folder then to the separate volume and storage pool that we just created. Just keep in mind that the larger this folder is, obviously the longer it will take, but you'll then see at that point that the actual shared folder is on a different volume. So. Anything that exists in this shared folder will exist inside of that NVMe drive. So if you're using something like 10 gig networking, you should be able to see right away the actual performance increase if you weren't fully saturating the network connection before. So that's a shared folder. But what you'll see here is that Docker initially was created on our first volume as well. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna install Docker on our new volume directly as opposed to running it on volume one. Now, while we can move the actual folder for Docker from volume one to volume three, that is not going to work for the actual application itself. We want all of our Docker containers running inside of the NVMe volume as opposed to the current volume it's installed on. So to show you how this works, I just SSH'd into the NAS and I went to volume one and you'll see this at Docker folder. That at Docker folder is where basically the entire Docker configuration lives. So there are unofficial ways of moving packages from one volume to another. We're not gonna do that. The process is gonna be longer, but this is the quote unquote official way of doing it. So the first thing you have to do is obviously save all of your Docker containers somewhere because as soon as you uninstall Docker, it's gonna remove everything. So open up Container Manager and basically anything that you have listed here, you have to make sure you save. So if it's a Docker Compose file, save the Docker Compose file. If it's a container, you might have to recreate it. So just keep that in mind. The next thing that you have to do is you have to make sure you move all of your Docker folders. So everything inside of this Docker folder, all I did was create a new folder inside of a different shared folder and I just copied and pasted everything inside of there. After we reinstall Docker, we'll move all of this data back. But again, you will have to recreate all of the containers. So as soon as that's done, what you can do is open up the package center and you can actually uninstall uh, container manager. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through and actually uninstall everything. And as soon as I select uninstall, it will remove everything from that first volume. Okay, so now that it's uninstalled, the next thing that you have to do is in the settings here, you're gonna see a default volume. This might be listed as an actual volume. If it is, you have to change it to always ask me, or you can change it to whatever volume it is if you always want packages installed to that NVMe storage pool. But for me, I'm gonna change it to always ask me. Select okay, and then when I select install, it will then first download the package, and as soon as it does, it's gonna ask us where we actually wanna install this. So we're gonna change this to volume three, we're gonna select next and we're gonna run it after. So now as soon as it's installed and it's running, anytime you basically do anything inside of Docker, it's gonna be on that third volume. So back to this terminal here, you'll see that nothing actually exists in that uh, Docker folder. But if we go to our third volume, you'll see that we now have at Docker here. So if we go in the directory and look at what's inside of it, you'll see that now everything is installed in the actual third volume. So that's good. The same is true for the actual Docker folder. You'll see the Docker folder here. So in terms of Docker being migrated to the NVMe volume, that's been done. Now, obviously you have to go inside of here and you have to go into your Docker folder and restore all of your actual data so that it all exists again. But 
The biggest point is going to be before you actually do this, make sure you're willing to actually migrate all of these containers because as you can see, nothing exists right now. There probably is a way to take the actual data that existed in that first volume and migrate it over. But again, none of it will be officially supported, but you can look up online if you wanna do that. So that's Container Manager. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to do this for Virtual Machine Manager. So inside of Virtual Machine Manager, you'll have a storage section here. And what we have to do is actually create new storage that will utilize that NVMe volume. So if you select Add and you select Start, what you'll see here is that I have both of the other volumes that I have on this NAS, but volume three is the NVMe volume. So we're gonna select next, we're gonna go through, and you'll see that at that point, we now have a second storage option for that NVMe pool. So when you go through and attempt to create a virtual machine, the first thing it's gonna ask you is where do you want this to actually live? And at that point, if you select that NVMe storage, this virtual machine will run on the NVMe volume and storage pool as opposed to your first volume. Now, the only other thing I wanna mention is unfortunately, there is no official way again of migrating packages. So what you have to do is if you really want one of your packages to run on that NVMe volume. You have to make sure you go in and back up all of the data, move it to a different shared folder, uninstall the package, and then reinstall it and select the third volume the same way that we did for Container Manager. Now my goal was to benchmark real world differences, but it was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I did get a few though that I'll share with the disclaimer that this is about as extreme of a scenario as you can get. As I'm comparing an SHR array with two hard drives compared to a RAID 1 array with NVMe drives. So this wouldn't be as extreme if I had more hard drives in the SHR array, but you get the point. In terms of virtual machines, the NVMe volume brought the boot up time for Home Assistant down to 41 seconds from two minutes and 35 seconds. For a blank Ubuntu 2404 install, the boot up time was brought down to 34 seconds from one minute and 20 seconds. Next, I set up two Ubuntu Docker containers and tested the transfer speeds for a one gigabyte file, which isn't a perfect example, but it's a decent example. With Docker running on my hard drive RAID array, the average speed of the transfer was 157 megabytes per second. With the NVMe volume, it was 622 megabytes per second. Finally, I didn't really have a way to determine exactly how much faster this process was, but I configured a normal Plex instance by downloading the package and the movie and TV show thumbnails loaded significantly faster than they did on the hard drive. All of this is to say, you're not going to notice tremendous differences in everything. And if you're not someone who is looking to get the absolute best performance, then wait a little longer and your service will eventually load. However, if you've been suffering from performance issues on certain applications or just want better overall performance, this is a legitimate option that you can try. I hope this video helped out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.